Let's buckle up, okay, and tighten the chin strap. We're going to go into the hockey helmet for your questions in, uh, that you've submitted on DM, email, and, um, and whatnot. So let's go right in here and get to them. My mortgage is renewing in February or March of next year. Is there anything I could do to protect myself now? Okay, this is a very good question. The Bank of Canada still has a couple meetings this year, and we're still a bit concerned about inflation being sticky, right? And if they can't get down to that 2% target rate, they still have an opportunity to hike rates again and further increase rates. And we see a lot of clients that are outside that 120 day period. And what we're suggesting and what we're doing for a lot of our clients is regardless of whether or not you're maturing in February, March, April, get an approval now. It's good for 120 days and your rate would be guaranteed for that time frame. So if rates do continue to go up, you have protected yourself with a lower rate that you could break your mortgage, pay a smaller penalty because there's less period of time to maturity, and you could take advantage of a lower rate today. Is now a good time for me to buy my first house or should I wait? As we know, sales have kind of come to a bit of a halt. <coughs> Not a lot of activity in July and August. We're seeing more people list. We're starting to see listings stay on longer. And I think this bodes well for first time buyers. And if I was a first time buyer today, I'd be very patient, okay? I think rates are gonna be at these elevated levels for a very long time. I strongly suggest you, pre you get pre-qualified and know exactly what you qualify for. If you have the ability to get a co-signer where you could buy a bigger home, um, to, to maybe repurpose, put in an extra unit, basement unit to help out with expenses, it may be a good opportunity to look for that type of home. So you could be selective, but patience is gonna be a virtue if you're a first time buyer. And you wanna make sure you're working with a real estate agent that is as patient as you need to be, okay? Because the last thing you wanna do is have somebody rush you in to a purchase. Okay. And there's a lot of eager realtors right now that want to get a sale because it's been crickets. Okay, It's been absolutely terrible. So be very selective. We deal with a number of professional realtors that would be matched up with you uh, based on location, personality, and we could help in that regard if you need some assistance. And we could help you get pre-approval, pre-approved. Okay. So I think the key here is there's going to be more and more listings coming on as the next quarter or two come into play at these higher levels. More and more folks are seeing renewals at rates they're not going to like, and they're probably going to say, I'm tapping out, I'm going to sell, figure out something else. Okay, And this is where opportunities present themselves. So if you're a first time buyer, take advantage of the home buyer. Um, program, which is the RSP home buyer program. So contribute to your RSP, your maximum up to $35,000. You can withdraw that, okay, and use it towards the purchase of a home up to 35,000 per person. The only caveat is those funds have to be in the RSP for 90 plus days, okay? Not 89, not 90, make sure it's 91, okay? 91 days and make sure you understand that February only has 28 days. So if you put it in January 1st and take it out on April 1st, may not necessarily be 90 days. Okay, so it's 90 days or you will be, um, it, it won't be accepted. They'll disqualify the withdrawal and then you have to repay all of it. Okay, so it's a great opportunity to create some additional down payment for you if you already have savings uh, put in place to buy a home. So if you have an RSP or you have funds saved and you have con contribution room of over 35 grand, put in 35 grand, you get a tax refund, you could use that for additional dollars, and you have the new home buyer savings fund where you could contribute up to $8,000 a year 
maximum 40,000 over five years. So I think because it was introduced this year, you could put 8,000 this year, 8,000 in January, you could put up to 16. You could withdraw that to purchase your first home and you can also deduct it from your income, okay? So it is cumulative. So you could put a $16,000 deposit if you haven't used it in 2023, in 2024, and just be patient, look to buy something in the following year, okay? Um, there are some uh, uh, land transfer tax rebates, but those are for amounts of purchases of 400,000 or less. So it doesn't really come into play in GTA, but if you're buying uh, outside of GTA and, and, and Hamlets where values are less, it might be useful. Speak to your realtor to see what you qualify for. What options are available for those that cannot refinance at their existing lender? Okay, well, this is happening quite a bit. And the reason being is a lot of people that are coming up for renewal were qualifying at 479, five and a quarter percent, okay? And now the ability to qualify for a mortgage under the stress test brings people to 8%. 6% is the contract rate, give or take, plus two is almost 8%. It is 8%. So if you get 599 plus two, you're gonna be qualifying at 799. And what people are realizing is that the stress test at these interest rate levels are causing people to not even qualify for the mortgage they have, let alone for a refinance for more. So in cases like this, what we do is we assess how much is being uh, refinanced, so how much additional funds are being added to the mortgage to determine if it's worth it to just stay where you are and add a second mortgage or refinance the whole thing, okay? And the sweet spot for us is if you're borrowing 10 to 20% of the mortgage, the original mortgage amount outstanding, you're better off to just get a second mortgage because the weighted average of the interest cost that you're gonna pay on a first and second will be cheaper than doing a whole brand new uh, refi at an alternative lender. Because when you're at a prime lender, you will get reasonable renewal rates. You're not gonna get the best because they know you can't go anywhere, but if you've made all your payments, they're most likely gonna offer you a renewal. So there's, a there's an unbelievable option for you to look at privates or you know alternative second facilities depending on whether you qualify for them or not. My parents have a limited income and it is not going far with inflation. Banks have declined them for any type of credit. How can they leverage their house downtown Toronto to generate income? Okay, well, this is something um, more and more seniors are up against. Seniors are staying in their homes longer. They need additional access to funds and the new stress test and qualifying rate, the B20 is basically decimated seniors to access any type of credit. It's almost like they've been uh, discriminated against because when people retire, their incomes drop and their ability, even though they got tremendous equity in their homes, they can no longer access traditional rates. So this, is, this has created the evolution of the reverse mortgage. We're seeing people take advantage of laneway suites and garden suites in the city of Toronto, they want to add or renovate, add a unit or do whatever the case is, and they need access to money to do the reno, to build out uh, additional units. And the reverse mortgage and the tools we have available to us are ones that we can help these folks achieve uh, this goal. We have contractors, we have people that can help in this regard, and we also have in-house uh, private uh, uh, we have a Mecca Mortgage Investment Corp that can help folks with some tools that are very flexible, they're very reasonably priced, and all these uh, Mortgage Investment Corp loans are fully open, so there's no back-end penalties if you want to break them and refinance to get out of them, okay? So if you have a parent uh, or anybody you know that's looking to do some type of rental and need access to cash and they're on limited income, reach out to us. We'd be happy to help out. A lot of these folks are over 55. You have to be over 55. So they're not necessarily seniors. They're just over 55 and can access reverse mortgage funds. So if you know anybody or you're looking to do something like this, reach out to us. We'll be happy to help. My variable rate at 6.2% is maturing next month. And I would like to know if I should renew into a fixed or variable product. Okay, this is where we're starting to see 
some peak renewal pain from folks that are maturing the second half of the year, seeing rates that they haven't seen before. Now, at 6.2, this person uh, this, this person asking the question, sitting at 7.2 minus 1, so they're at 6.2% of the variable. The fixed rates are in that range as well. What we're suggesting to folks is either look at a two or three year term, and if you're looking to sell or trying to get out of your mortgage in the short term, maybe stay with the variable. The problem is, is variables aren't offering aggressive discounts on renewals. The prime minus ones just don't exist anymore unless you're in the insured world, which means if you're in an insured mortgage, it stays insured, you're going to get better pricing than if it was a conventional mortgage. But keep in mind, I think rates are going to be high for a while. And um, I like the two and three year rate. So what I would suggest to this person is get some pricing on your variable, your two, your three and your five year fixed rates. Give our office a call and we'll properly assess what works best for your particular system, uh, particular situation. Keep in mind that I don't know the household income. I don't know how much mortgage is uh, being borrowed and what the property value is. I like having a full synopsis of, a, of, of the situation in order to make the proper uh, recommendation uh, for clients. But that's what we're looking at right now. Two, three or fixed rates for folks. And uh, unless you're selling, then you go with a variable where the penalty is just a three month uh, interest charge. I have a small mortgage, but I'm carrying a lot of credit card debt. Is there anything I could do with my house to help me out of debt? One of the ways you could do it is refinancing. Okay. Now, what we want to make sure is that your current mortgage debt, um, if you're at a favorable interest rate, we don't want to break it. Okay. So we could look at other tools to look at accessing uh, credit via either a home equity line of credit. Um, a second mortgage that at, that's at a reasonable rate and is flexible, it's not as expensive as some sharks and, and snakes charge out there. But we can look at options that are favorable to you to get rid of some of those higher paying credit card debts or loans or whatever the case is to minimize the cost of borrowing and get you on your way to saving a few dollars. So if you are in a situation like this, please reach out to our office. Uh, we have a great group, call me directly if you need to. We'd be happy to help, give you a few options to think about, digest, talk over with your family, see if it's the right thing for you. But we could definitely provide uh, some suitable products that uh, could work. Okay, so thanks for that question. Can a mortgage be changed to a reverse mortgage at my bank? There's a first. So, um, okay, first of all, not all banks offer reverse mortgages. Right now in Canada, there's only three lenders that offer reverse mortgages. It's uh, Home Equity Bank, Equitable Bank of, Canada, Bank of Canada, and Bloom Financial. Those are the three lenders that offer reverse mortgages. So if you're at Equitable, they do offer reverse mortgages. If you're at Home Equity Bank, which only does reverse mortgages, you wouldn't have a mortgage there, so you wouldn't be there. Uh, and Bloom only does reverse mortgages. So. Here's uh, what can happen. If you have an existing mortgage and the balance outstanding relative to what your property is worth, if it's within the range the reverse mortgage allows you to borrow, it can be converted to a reverse mortgage. So reverse mortgages are really interesting because they become very popular. You know, I've had uh, a few people on from Bloom and Home Equity over uh, the last few years talking about this. It's becoming a very useful product for seniors who want to stay in their home. And many are staying in their home longer because they don't want to give up the real estate. And with the advent and the legislation changes in the city of Toronto for garden suites, additional units being built, uh, being allowed in homes, people are hanging on to real estate. And reverse mortgages give them options to add, uh, repurpose their property into multi-units, add that garden suite, that laneway suite, so they could get some help, support workers, whatever the case is, to help them while they're aging very popular We're working with many people in this regard so we think it's a really good product for seniors who no longer could qualify under the new stress test and qualifying rules that banks and Aussie have implemented so uh, it can be converted to a reverse mortgage if you have the equity position 
that the reverse mortgage company will allow you. So for everybody that are out there that are, are, are thinking of reverse mortgages or, or need to know a little bit about them, you have to be at least 55 years old, okay? It's only available for people over the age of 55, and the amount you could borrow is based on a matrix of your age. So the younger you are, the less you're gonna get, and you could borrow from 25% up to 57% of the value of your home. Because remember, there's no payments on these instruments. They're voluntary, actually. So you can opt not to pay, and the interest just accumulates over time, okay? And then when you sell the property or you need to dispose of it, you will have enough time to dispose of it. No one's kicking you out of your house, okay? You can't lose your house. It's all a myth, it's all bullshit. So if you need help with reverse mortgages, give our office a call. We've got a few people in the office that specialize in this stuff, and we're doing loads of them. They're more popular than ever and a really good tool for seniors that need options that work for them and free up cash flow, especially in an environment with high inflation, high interest rates, and people just getting squeezed. So a very good solution for folks that are stuck. Folks, you need any assistance, please feel free to reach out. We're here to help. We're, we're here seven, five days a week. We're here from eight o'clock in the morning to six at night, and we're happy to assist. So have a great day. I hope the kids got back to school okay, and we'll see you next week. Take care.